I, it's just so beyond the pale that we can have reasonable disagreements over whether or not the last president tried to lead a rebellion against the government to entrench himself in power. I don't know how we can have people that disagree on that and still function. Because who's to say the next deal isn't I need to murder political opponents, which he now has criminal immunity to do, or that I need to uh, silence the media because, as he said multiple times, the media is the enemy of the people. Or if he comes into office and he does suspend the Constitution, as he said multiple times he would like to do, and he is a dictator on day one, which he's told Sean Hannity that he wants to be, right? Then at that point, like, I have nothing I can say because we don't we don't misalign on values. It's just we've just seen. I don't think we've even seen the same set of facts. That's bananas. And I can't believe that I live in this world. If you enjoy content like this, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video. Destiny, once again, gets absolutely embarrassed on this podcast. This time he's on an impact theory with Tom Bilyeu. And whenever Destiny brings up his ridiculous woke talking points, Tom absolutely shuts Destiny down for the ridiculous things that he's saying. Let's get into this clip here of Destiny, once again, getting absolutely demolished on another podcast that he went on this time like i said it's impact theory with tom bilyeu let's get into this clip of tom bilyeu shutting down destiny i'm already dealing with rules of thumb approximation narrative all of that and so for me it becomes a question of can anyone actually be trusted to say you're the person that knows what is objectively true and therefore since you're uniquely maybe not solely but uniquely able to determine what is true you can now give people a score or whatever and begin to shut down the people that get a low score that's what scares me that when it meets reality it's just never going to hold up so here's my issue with this framing i don't disagree with you conceptually it doesn't have anything to do with the world that we live in right now the what what we're what we're doing is i've drawn a, a, a i've drawn a square in front of you Okay, and there might be two people who are intently looking at that square. Okay, with no other congruent lines drawn on it, and they're going to argue whether they think it's a square or a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Okay, because one guy is saying I think it might be a little bit longer. Okay, and what you're saying is I don't want somebody to come in and say this answer is wrong. Okay, but that's not the world that we have right now. Right now we have that shape, and there are two people arguing whether it's a square or a rectangle, and then a. 5,000 other people are arguing that that is actually uh, WWE wrestling, just the shape. And they're so clearly beyond outside of anything that would be even remotely. We're not talking about Newtonian physics versus general and special relativity. We're talking about believing in genes versus Lysenkoism, believing that bacteria, that's, that's where we're at. You laugh, but it's absolutely the case that that is where we're at. That I can be on stage now with conservatives who will lie with impunity um, about, say, January 6th, the cops let people in. And I'll chat, and I did this recently in the debate. I'll bet you $5,000 right now that the pers first person that broke into the building was a guy with a right shield. It was uh, Dominic Pisenko or Dominic Pizzol, I think, uh, Proud Boy. He was arrested. It's all on video. And then they'll go quiet. When they don't say anything, that communicates to me that you know that you're lying. You know that you're up here telling a lie. And so many of these people do it, that they lie and they lie and they lie and they lie and they lie. And then the frustrating thing is, not to, um, not calling you out, but because I used to be part of this too, is that people will come forth to defend these people under the guise of free speech, and these people are just parasites. They don't actually care about free speech. They're just using it to sell lies. They go, yeah, free speech is important. And that's why blah, 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 blah. And then they just lie, lie, lie. And it's like, this is a very frustrating environment to live in because I agree conceptually again with your world that it is kind of scary to have somebody come in and say, well, should you be able to say this or that? Although we do to some extent, I can't go on TV and tell you to drink poison, right? I would get in trouble, right? Uh, but right now the lies are so outlandish that it's destroyed. We live in different realities right now in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with that. I think what I disagree with, I don't think that is because of the nature of people going out and wielding lies. Um, I look at all of the facts laid out before me in terms of how to deal with the 2024 election. And I make the decision that even though I hate that this is the decision that I'm going to vote for Trump, you look at that and think, yo, what the fuck? Like, how can people like, are their brains broken? Um, and so the reason that I come to that, obviously it's multivariate and I can walk through it, but you can. If you go look at like all the January 6th stuff, for instance, I'm like, yeah, like there's nothing to argue. But I look at all of that and go, if you could show me that Trump was legitimately lying, that he knew that the election um, that he had lost fair and square 
and he was still doing these things, does that completely discredit him? And so, yes, at that point, I would say if you had a, um, a mind reading device and you knew that, that would completely change my take on it because I walk away from watching the or hearing the calls of him literally on your stream, uh, him doing the calls and everything. I walk away going, I think he actually believed it. Now, whether he's a fool or not to believe it is a totally different question. Whether he's completely delusional is a totally different question. But if you could show me into his heart, no, he for real is lying. Okay, cool. That changes my perspective. Now, I would want you to point said mind reading device at all the fears that I have over on the left because I. You also have to take into account, too. And I, I don't even think Donald Trump, I mean, I, I don't want to say he did anything wrong on the J6 stuff because it probably could have been handled a little better. But. And I also wish it would have never happened just because it does give the left like so much ammo. You know, it's like if that didn't happen, I don't know what the hell they would always talk about. I, I, I don't know, because that's all they talk about, it seems. So uh, that's the only reason why I wish it kind of wouldn't ha wouldn't have happened. But at the same time, put yourself in Donald Trump's shoes. Every single person around you in your close circle on social media, every one of your supporters is saying, this was rigged, this was stolen. And kind of in the lead up to it, so many unprecedented things happen. You know, the, the whole 2020 stuff, the mail-in ballots, so many things popping up on social media. This was done, that, that was done. It's like, can you really blame him for thinking that it was stolen? Whether or not it was, it's up to you to decide. At this point, it's kind of water under the bridge. Uh, not really, honestly, because it's probably gonna keep happening again. But in terms of that election, it's kind of over with. It's four years ago now. The left is still talking about it nonstop. But even if it wasn't stolen and he was lied to or he, he was misled into thinking that it was, can you really blame him when literally everybody who is his supporter, his, his close inner circle, everything is telling him that, that it was stolen? And then you put on top of that the censoring of all of the, you know, the news stories that was anti the other side, all the fake news stories that came up about Donald Trump. Yeah, all of this stuff like can you really blame the guy you know so if you're voting for him based on that or not voting for him based on that it's kind of dumb who cares about what you feel personally about the guy vote for the better candidate that is going to be better for the country how why is that so hard for people to understand is beyond me it just seems like such a simple especially if you're somebody who makes any sort of money like if you're broke number one i don't think you should be allowed to vote if you're broke but number two if you make some kind of money and you're voting for someone who is objectively going to make the economy worse and there's one candidate who is saying yeah i want to i want to get rid of the income tax even though it's probably not going to happen you know it's, it's probably just one of those false promises that politicians make all the time the small chance of it being true should make you want to vote for the guy because the other side is definitely not saying that you know they're they're definitely not saying that they want to abolish income tax so yeah. I want to know what's going on in their hearts as well, but I have a very definable thing that would allow me to change my mind. Um, and so, but I don't think for a second that you're wwe -ing any of this either. I think you really believe it's obvious that he's lying. How could anybody believe anything differently? Um, so my thing is given that the only heart I can see inside is my own, and I know that I'm not making it up and I know that, um, and it'll be easy because I'm sure you'll push me on a lot of this stuff and you'll see which ways I'll break and go one way or the other. Um, but I feel that good faith people of a certain level of intellect can look at that and walk away with different views. And I want them to. And when I look at putting hardcore controls in to make sure that we account for disinformation, that uh, you make the world worse. Like I'm way more terrified of that than I am it being more difficult for the public to think through what is true than I am the world where we're being told what is true. Gotcha. I think that the thought process that you have right now in terms of people being able to reasonably disagree on that, I think is the end of this country probably. That's probably why I might be looking to leave after this election cycle. Because I think that people just, yes, I, it's just so beyond the pale that 
we can have reasonable disagreements over whether or not the last president tried to lead a rebellion against the government to entrench himself in power. I don't know how we can have people that disagree on that and still function. Because who's to say the next deal isn't I need to murder political opponents, which he now has criminal immunity to do, or that I need to uh, silence the media because, as he said multiple times, the media is the enemy of the people. Or if he comes into office and he does suspend the Constitution, as he said multiple times he would like to do, and he is a dictator on day one, which he's told Sean Hannity that he wants to be, right? then at that point, like, I have nothing I can say because we don't, we don't misalign on values. It's just we've just seen, I don't think we've even seen the same set of facts. Because like even, or you can respond to that if you want, yeah. So I was just, I have a theory that the way that people should be approaching this is to just completely rule out preemptive strikes. So the thing that worries me because here's what my hope would be like if kamala harris wins and shout out to david pacman he's the first person that i heard say it in the opposite direction uh he said look if trump wins i'm not gonna spend any time talking about the election was stolen i'm just gonna be like cool how do we make sure that only um policies get put in place that are actually good for the american people and i'm like yeah if i end up uh, if Trump doesn't get elected and Kamala Harris does, I'm not going to spend any time saying, oh, the election was stolen. It's like, word, man. I actually hope whatever direction. It's a landslide. And so now, even though, like, let's say, in fact, let's make it way harder. If you point the um, mind reading device at Trump and I realize, oh, my God, he was actually lying. That was a legitimate attempted coup. And he is going to do everything he can to take over the government and make sure that a Republican is in there forever, then immediately I'm a thousand percent opposed to that bad, not good. But at that point, that's where I go into, I don't do preemptive strikes. I if you enjoy content like this, to make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video. I wanna see how this plays out, but I would for sure, I'm now in second amendment territory. I'm now in the, uh, I am hunkering down, preparing for the worst looking at getting out of a major city, but because I don't know that I'm right, I don't know that that's gonna go in a horrible direction. Um, I wanna wait and see, but would you wait and see before you left the country or would you be like, bro, My, I'm is... just the overall investment and in whatever project we have now just collapses immediately. And <laughs> I'm just- what, what project? I don't understand. The American that. project, I guess. Right? Yeah, that the, I think that it's, um, the problem is, it's just, it's just there are just so many. It's just a wide collection of facts, I guess. Um, but where would you go? Uh, I don't know. Some place in a. I either just hunker down in some no income tax place in the U.S. and just say screw it, or I'd go to Canada or fucking Mexico or the fuck. I don't know. <sighs> okay, so you are somebody who I think is extraordinarily good at. All right, what are the facts on the ground? Um, being very dispassionate just looking at things um, very objectively. Wait, that, that's such a cool shot, though. I, I know that this is supposed to be all about politics and everything, but look at this shot. It's like, there's no way, this, this whole podcast is an hour and 40 minutes long. There's no way that this is actually handheld, but it's so cool. I, I'm a cinematography nerd, okay? I went to film school. I never talk about this, but this is such a cool shot because it's the entire podcast. It's film, like there's a, there's a shot, there's an angle of this and it looks handheld the way it's moving, but it's 100% not handheld. I don't know how he did this. Somebody let me know in the comments. Looking at things um, very objectively, it, that feels emotional. It feels like you so believe and so love in this country that there's something in there that would break your heart and it is a response to having your heart broken. Is that a misread or does that feel accurate? I mean, it's partially true, but I mean like heartbroken over like the, like imagine you're a one third owner, I guess, in a business and the two thirds other guys decide that you're not gonna make cars anymore, you're gonna make anime dolls. And you're like, fuck, <laughs> buy me out, I'm leaving, right? <laughs> So I guess in that sense, yeah, because it would just mean that the direction and what this country stands for, what it means internationally for the United States is just it, it, like everything is like changed fundamentally so much that I don't even know if I identify strongly with it anymore. Doesn't it feel like in this moment, like in this moment, that's where we're at. But like I can only imagine in the middle of the Civil War, that had to be pretty gnarly. Like the fact that, you know, to put myself on the good guy side, the fact that half the country wants to keep slaves, that's bananas. And I can't believe that I live in this world. I would have to look at the media environment back then because I probably think that that media environment, it's, it's possible that it would have been better because at least those people. So this is really about the media environment. But those, because those people, my guess is, and I'm not an expert on this, my guess is those people knew what they were fighting over, right? Mm -hmm. One side thought they had the right to maintain slaves. The other side didn't. 
But right now, what are we fighting over? Whether or not Hugo Chavez came back from the dead and created a Dominion voting system. To, you laugh at this, but the guy that you're voting for believes everything that I'm saying or purports to. He doesn't actually, um, but he, he tells his fans that um, constantly and he lies about it even to this day, right? Or that, you know, from the top down, there was this grand conspiracy to steal the election from Donald Trump or that the 50 million other crazy, wild, ridiculous things he said, like these, th we don't even know like why we disagree with each other now. Like is FEMA stealing homes from people because it's giving out money and then they disguised it as a loan or are, is there 50 million illegal immigrants that are coming in because Kamala Harris is, you know, personally unlocking the tunnels to let them in to destroy their, like, we don't even know what we're fighting at anymore. And, okay. and conservatives have gotten so good at controlling the whole media environment, even in media places they don't control directly, um, that they've like memory hold so many things. It's just like, it's, it's unbelievable to me, I guess. I don't know. Why do you attribute that? You know, it's funny. I kind of, I kind of agree with destiny here. Um, and, and just in the fact that I'm pretty black pilled on the whole thing too, just because of all the things that he just said, but the complete opposite, you know, from, from the opposite perspective, people like destiny feel so strongly that conservatives control the media environment. And a huge problem that conservatives feel like is happening is the censorship from the left side on conservatives. And yeah, it's, it's toned down a bit as being more conservative and traditional has become more cool and mainstream to do. But like for the longest time, dude, you couldn't, you know, if you were outed as a conservative, you probably lost your job. A lot of family members would shun you from the family. Your girlfriend would break up with you. Like all this stuff would happen and it still does happen, you know, for sure. But it's just toned down a lot. It's wild how destiny can think that conservatives have control over the media more than anything. When the left, I mean, other than X, they control basically every single social media. They... They decide which speech is allowed and which speech isn't. Not the right. So that's another reason why I am black pilled just like Destiny is, but for the opposite reason. Because of the massive disconnect that is between the left and the right, and no signs of it getting closer together. It's actually getting further and further apart. And of course, I think that's the fault of the left, but everybody like Destiny who is on the left think it's the fault of the right. So it really does just become an unsolvable problem. Like there's always going to be a massive divide going forward in this country. There's no doubt about it unless something bad happens that brings us all together, which obviously also isn't, isn't good. That's not going to be fun. That's going to be pretty bad. If something bad enough happens that it actually brings us together, it must be pretty damn bad, you know, because of how divided we are. And like I said, it's just getting worse. It, there's no signs of us coming closer together. So it's, that, I agree. I'm black pilled as well. I don't think there's any coming back from this. I think we're just going to decline. I just hope it's a slow enough decline that I can live my life first. And then we just go into utter turmoil, you know, like, let me live out my life and then we can just nuke the country or whatever. That to one side. Because they do it way worse than the other side. It's not even remote. You will never. But don't you think it's you will the never, architecture of the human mind? You will never, ever, ever, ever be able to give me an example of a mainstream media organization in the United States behaving like Fox News did over the Dominion stuff. You just know equivalent. That in and of itself should have been the destruction of that political party. Um, for people that don't know, Fox News, all of the execs and all of the hosts knew that all the Dominion claims were lies from the very start. And they continued to push the lie because they knew they were losing viewership to OAN and Newsmax. None of this is debated. None of this is controversial. All of this is public after the depositions. Um, there's a reason why Fox News settled that suit for the largest settlement in all of corporate defamation history for some $787 million. So every single person, and I would guess if I had to estimate, 80% plus Republicans to this day believe something that Fox News was knowingly lying about that came from Trump's campaign. That's just unbelievable to me. Okay. Um, so that could be true. I, I don't think his percentages were very accurate. I don't think it's like 80% or whatever you just said, but I'm sure there are a decent amount of Republicans that still believe certain things that were lied to about. But what I know for a fact is that many, if not all people of the woke cult, people who are on the left wing, believe a lot of things that just flat out aren't true, not just with politics, not just with Fox News and these lawsuits, but just with reality thinking that men can become women and women can become men and men should be competing in, against women in college sports. It's, I mean, that's just simple, fundamental misunderstanding of reality. So let me know in the comments though, what you guys think. I know we're going on a bit long with this one, but I appreciate you for watching this far into it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this Destiny appearance here on Tom Bilyeu's show, Impact Theory, and, and Tom Bilyeu really pushing back on Destiny in a very calculated way, but pushing back on him enough to where it makes him just 
basically bury himself with the dumb things that he's saying. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this whole Destiny versus Tom Bilyeu situation.